Hey guys and welcome back to another Random Distractions Home Theater update and this one we're going to be talking about heat uh, in regards to the Anthem MRX uh, 1140. Back on uh, or uh, actually on the last video that I mentioned about the heat issues uh, a lot of people commented and saying that yeah that seems kind of high um, and of course I you know I've, I've mentioned this before but I'm new to this stuff and so I um, didn't know I mean I knew that electronics suffer from heat uh, or can be damaged from heat and um, that can shorten their lifespan and all that good stuff but I have never like you know really looked into uh, what my receiver was doing uh, but now that I have this one and I definitely want to make sure that I take care of it uh, for a very very long time uh, I want to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can for it and so based on that i had emailed anthem in regards to the heat issue and that was back on march 8th i did receive a reply from them on march 11th uh, but all they said was um, is the unit being used in a rack with adequate ventilation and uh, which part of the device were the measurements done uh, as our power entry board is located on the rear left corner um, so that's basically all they they said um, and I did reply back to them I you know I mentioned that hey you know it's in a media cabinet uh, there is some space on the side and the top but not necessarily ventilation um, and I actually even pointed them to the video uh, to you know to take a look and see kind of what I had done and uh, I also mentioned on there that uh, obviously I'm not a pro or I didn't do use any like advanced testing equipment. This was just a little infrared thermometer uh, that can uh, do surface temperature uh, in addition to the body temperature. So uh, that's all I did. Um, I didn't hear anything from them. So I followed back up on March 20th and unfortunately to this day, which uh, today is March 30th when I'm recording this, um, there's still no update from them. So unfortunately, I have not heard from them. Um, and one thing I did want to point out, kind of like how I mentioned before, is that I, you know, obviously I don't, uh, I'm not a pro at this. Uh, and so these were just kind of like, eh, you know, this is what I have. I'll give it a try and see what it, what it shows. Um, I think one of the comments on that uh, previous one is uh, from Dave. Uh, mentioned that you know there's a lot of things to consider the temperature of the room um, anything else you know near it ventilation and all that good stuff so so definitely take this with a grain of salt uh, as far as my experience your experience may be different like I said I've been hearing uh, I heard from a lot of you uh, in the comments uh, that you know that heating is definitely seems to be something that I should look at in addition to the comments about how you know how high the heat was, I also got some comments, uh, and I just want to mention these people out: uh, Bob Stanley, Blue Flame, uh, and Phil Martin. Uh, they mentioned a company called AC Infinity, um, and so when I decided, okay, I need to do something about this, uh, especially uh, with the Justice League uh, Snyder cut uh, that I was going to watch, uh, and that one's a, a four-hour movie. I didn't want you know. I wanted to just like completely overheat um, so I definitely wanted to do something before I watched that and so thanks to them I kind of uh, focused in on AC Infinity and started looking up uh, what they offer uh, and I actually have a variety of products uh, when I started looking at them um, they sell fans on their own that can be controlled uh, by a simple like switch of high low medium or off uh, up into like you know things that uh, can be placed inside a media cabinet or installed on a media cabinet to like even in your air ducts. So they apparently do a lot of uh, different things. And so based on doing the research on that uh, company, I kind of settled on the AC Infinity Aircom T10. And this is a unit that is kind of slim um, and it sits on top of the receiver. And what it does, it suctions uh, the hot air from the receiver and then blows it out the front. Um, you can actually buy other versions that blow it out the back uh, or blow it up from the top. Um, so they, they have a little bit of variety as far as, you know, to meet different kind of needs. Uh, for I went with the front blower because, uh, like I mentioned, the receiver is in a media cabinet. Um, there's space kind of around it, so there was definitely space to put it on top of that. Uh, but there's uh, the ventilation is sort of like at the top of the media cabinet and in between that I have a shelf and then the center channel that sits on top of that. Um, so there's not much circulation uh, in the back. Um, so I decided that maybe a front blower would be the, the best option. 
So as I'm talking about this, I'm showing the unboxing video of it, uh, but it was really simple. It just came with the power cable, uh, some manual, and then of the unit, of course. As far as setup, it's actually very super easy. Uh, once I connected the power to the back of the unit, I slid it in uh, to the top of the receiver and then turned it on. Uh, the mode button uh, allows you to go through the different settings and, and then the uh, arrow keys uh, or yeah, I guess the arrow keys allow you to change different settings uh, based on the mode that you're on. Um, so for example, if you switch it to on mode uh, and then press the up arrow or down arrow, it'll set the maximum uh, speed used by either auto mode or, or smart mode. Um, and then you, switching to alarm can uh, help you uh, change the alarm setting uh, as far as how hot it needs to get before it starts making a sound and, and stuff like that. So uh, setup was super easy. Um, the way that I uh, ended up leaving it on was uh, 85 degrees uh, for, for it to turn on and then 110 for the alarm. Um, and I also, uh, since I don't like um, lights or too many lights on the front of the media center, uh, especially since we sit right in front of it, um, the, one of the buttons allows you to turn the screen on and off. If the unit is still on, uh, but it just allows you to turn the screen on and off so that it doesn't uh, bug you. When I was going through the fan settings, uh, what I noticed is that uh, based on you know where it is and where we're sitting, uh, unfortunately, the highest I can go is to setting number two for the fan speed. Um, after that, it starts being a little bit too audible uh, to the point where like you can really hear it even probably with when you're when I'm watching a movie and there's like a slow part um, and things like that. It, it would have been very audible. Um, so I set the max speed at two and then I switched it over to smart mode. And the way smart mode works is that it'll uh, basically try to use the lowest setting to try to cool it down uh, when it initially starts going up but if the lower setting doesn't do it or doesn't cut it after a while it'll switch to the next higher setting that you have on there until it does start cooling it down uh, and because I only set it to uh, number two then it's not going to go any higher than that if it if it needs to. With those settings um, I did actually finally see the Snyder Cut of uh, Justice League and um, uh, just a side note on the movie, uh, I thought it was great. I actually enjoyed Man of Steel and then uh, the director's cut of Batman vs Superman was definitely a lot better than the one that I actually saw in theaters. Um, but I uh, definitely had enjoyed those and I've, uh, you know, I've enjoyed other uh, of Zack Snyder's movies as well. And this one uh, was no different. And I did hear that uh, before that uh, in the reviews, like if you like Zack Snyder movies, then you're going to like Justice League because it's all Zack Snyder all the time kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I didn't enjoy it. I actually have had another friend come over and we watched it uh, at the same time and it was he was also uh, really happy with it and, and really enjoyed it. Um, at around the middle part of the movie, I decided to take a look at the, um, the settings or uh, what it was showing on the uh, AC Infinity. And it did show that it was like around 83, 84 and so the fan uh, was still kind of blowing because uh, it uh, actually doesn't turn off, uh, in smart mode at least, until it reaches four degrees below uh, what your setting is. So the fan was, uh, was actually running at that time. And then at the end of the movie, I took a look at it again and it was still at 83. Uh, so the fan was still running in the, at the one speed, uh, not the two speed, but the one speed and it was keeping it at that 83 uh, degrees and I went ahead and got the that surface uh, infrared surface temp um, thermometer um, and I tried to kind of do it from the sides um, so it was not like directly right above it since I had the unit on top of that and it's kind of a pain in the butt to try to drag it out uh, but it was showing like around 79, 80 degrees and I kind of pushed it back and, and tried it uh, at the top where I could and it was showing around 82, 83. So it, it definitely does seem like the probe, temperature probe is working on that unit and it was keeping it cool. So uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, it does work and I am looking forward to continuing to use that to help uh, the receiver last a very long time. 
And so one thing I do kind of want to ask uh, for my viewers is, you know, based on the settings that I have right now, is that the best kind of thing to, or is that the best setting to have? Um, like I mentioned before, I'm kind of new to this stuff. Um, so I've never, you know, really checked to see what temperature would be good. And um, I based it on 85 because that's kind of what the default setting was. So I figured, eh, you know, that sounds okay. I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, but, you know, normally our house is around 70 degrees on average. Um, and that's, you know, what the temperature would have been if the receiver was just off and I wasn't using it. Um, so I don't know if, you know, maybe I should bring it down to 75 or, you know, if I should do something else. Uh, but if you can let me know in the comments what you guys think, uh, that would be awesome. Um, definitely recommend AC Infinity uh, if you are looking for something. Like I said, they have a variety of different products. Um, and so I'm looking forward to continuing to use this and hopefully uh, extend the life of my receiver uh, for a long time because I have really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to, to enjoying uh, many years uh, with this, this device. So. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, would definitely appreciate a like, of course, on the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you know, make sure to leave them down below and I'll try to answer them the best that I can. And uh, would definitely appreciate you guys subscribing. Um, uh, again, I've been really excited of all the new subscribers. I really appreciate that. Uh, not only because it, uh, it helps the channel, but it also, like, you know, I've been able to get a lot of feedback and, and things like that to help improve uh, the my home theater experience and in some cases you know probably help other people so uh, that's been awesome uh, so definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when the next one drops and until then i hope you have a good one